Lee Chase, I'm executive director here at the Dawn of Hope, and uh, I've had the pleasure and privilege of being here for 25 years in just a couple of months. Well, directly, of course, we're serving about 220, low 20s, 222 or so folks right now. Uh, but one of the things that people tend to forget is that there are families attached to so many of those people. And we would like to think not only are we providing a service to the people directly, but that the families also rely on us. Uh, again, whether it's a, a day program where uh, the folks are transported in here for, for whatever particular program they're involved in, but that allows the families the opportunity to uh, regenerate or, or do those things that they might not be able to do if their family member is present. Uh, in, in many cases with the, the level of disability of our folks, uh, it's a very constant consuming uh, care regimen that these parents have to, uh, to, to live with. And uh, we'd like to hope and think that we're also serving them too. Well, uh, we serve five counties, uh, very limited in Greene County and, and fairly limited in Unicoi, but uh, Washington, uh, Sullivan, and uh, Carter County uh, are our three main service counties. Uh, we have, uh, I think right now, 11 fixed route vans, uh, typically transporting 10 to 11 folks per vehicle. Uh, but that's only a small portion of what's occurring in the mornings. Uh, we have 24 residential homes who also have vehicles that are transporting people in too. So uh, probably they're averaging uh, at least a couple of people each. So we've got a lot of people on, uh, on the road every morning. Uh, all told right now, we're about 315 staff strong. And, and of course that always surprises people. Uh, obviously the bulk of those folks are in our residential program. Uh, when you have a residential home that you literally operate 24 hours, seven days a week. Now, obviously some of those homes, the folks in the daytime, Monday through Friday, do come to a day program. But as we find we're serving folks with more medical and aged uh, folks, uh, we also have a lot of folks that are just not capable of, of handling that physical routine every day. So probably out of our 24 homes, you know, we may have uh, 15 of them that actually have folks that are still at home due to medical or health or, or age uh, issues. So that requires a lot of staff when you're talking staffing a house 24 hours. We were started on the basis of filling an interim between institutions and nothing uh, because parents would either have to keep their children at home or send them to an institution. So through the years we've developed, uh, different programs have come about, and likewise the funding has also uh, gone through its own metamorphosis through the years. First it was privately supported totally. There, there actually was no funding. Uh, we think times are maybe difficult today. Uh, at that point in time, uh, this community is what allowed Dawn of Hope to survive to the point that the state actually did become involved in funding services for this particular disability. Uh, back in the probably early 90s, the state did begin to access federal funding through the Medicaid waiver. And basically, the waiver is just a program that is, uh, was originally designed to keep people from being institutionalized. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, private funding is still not a part of it. Uh, again, as you well know, uh, we're very involved in uh, community fundraising. Uh, the sad part about it is, is the funding from the state primarily pays for the service provision. It doesn't buy capital goods. For example, that fleet of vehicles that we were talking about earlier, uh, we have to find ways to buy that ourselves. Uh, buildings, uh, the state does not fund those. 
So there's always going to be a place where we need to continue uh, to rely upon the community to support us. And this community, uh, City of Johnson City, uh, the people here have just been absolutely fantastic. Uh, one of our members was uh, really hot on Hawaiian luau's and, and, and that particular thing. And uh, that just seemed to kind of stick and, and every year we've tried to kind of kick it up a notch a little bit as far as uh, how we approach it. Uh, I know uh, two years ago we uh, had our first uh, roast pig, you know, official Hawaiian style pig. Uh, and uh, everybody just seems to really get into the flow of it. The Dawn of Hope is and has been fulfilling for years um, uh, a, a mission that uh, is so critical. There are some among us who were born with some unbelievable challenges. They're vibrant, beautiful human beings, but they're not able to pursue careers or passions the way maybe most of us can. And that's where the dawn of hope comes in. They say, this individual, while facing a lot of challenges, can still be productive, happy, uh, and informed, and interested in the world around them. They just need some assistance. And that's what the Donna Hope does. They help them to be trained in career fields and job skills. They, they help them to find residential placement, just a, a place where they can be on their own. And over the decades, and it's been decades, Donna Hope has helped countless uh, people right here in the Tri-Cities be happy individuals who aren't limited by the physical or mental limitations they were born with. Tonight is just a way to celebrate Dawn of Hope, to have a big old party, and to raise money to help them do what they've got to do. It costs a lot of money to be in compliance with a lot of uh, agencies. Dawn of Hope needs support from the community. They need funds donated. And uh, there are a lot of people here tonight who have done that. And somebody here tonight is going to get to walk away with uh, some cool cash uh, as a way of, I think, saying thanks for being part of the Luau. Tonight is uh, it's really important. It's our biggest fundraiser that we have. We have two each year. This is the largest. Um, it's important for us because about five years ago we moved into a large vacant elementary school in Johnson City. Um, when we came in it needed renovations to be handicap accessible. So they raised a million dollars to get us into the building, but there was about 300,000 more that we needed help with. So each year we have this event and it goes back to help us pay for the building when we came in. Yeah, this evening is, is our biggest fundraiser of the year. It's the Donahoe, sixth annual Donahoe Spring Luau sponsored by Cherokee Distributing Company. And uh, we've got the best crowd we've ever had, Patrick. It's, it's turning out great. Of course, this year, absolutely phenomenally successful. Uh, we literally uh, increased our uh, earnings on the event by 100%. Uh, I believe the final figure is going to come in at about $43,000 net, which so much credit goes to our board and our supporters. And of course, you know, in doing all that, I think everybody had a great time too. Uh, yes, if anyone is really interested in assisting us, either through donations or volunteer, they can certainly go to our website, dawnofhope.com, or they can call our main office, 434-5600, and ask for the development directory, director, or if you remember the name, Brittany Short, and she will be happy to handle either of those.